We need this function to be continuous and differentiable everywhere. So for it to be continuous, the limit from the left and the limit from the right need to be the same. So if we were to plug uh, negative 1 in on the left side of negative 1, that would be a negative 2, uh, 2 times negative 1 makes negative 2, so it makes negative 5. Two negative signs there, huh? And on the right side, you plug in negative 1 for the right side, that's going to be 5 minus a plus b. We need that to equal negative 5. We need these, this is the left and the right hand limit. The left and the right hand limit need to equal each other. We need 5 minus a plus b to equal negative 5. But there's two variables there in one equation. So we've got to go back to the drawing board. Um, that's where we're going to use the idea about differentiability. Oh, and this is tricky at this point in the calculus course. Yeah, okay, so we haven't done, there's another way to evaluate a derivative. We've got to do it the longer way because we haven't talked about that other way first. So we want the limit as x approaches negative 1 for f of x minus f of negative 1 over x minus negative 1 using the, the definition of, a, of an instantaneous slope, the definition of a derivative at a point. So that's going to be uh, for the left side. It's the limit as x approaches negative 1 for 2x minus 3. That's subtracted by, if you plug in negative 1, 2 times negative 1 makes, oh, we already did that, makes negative 5. That's all over x plus 1. And so in the numerator, we're going to get, here, drop the limit for a second, that's 2x plus 2 over x plus 1. So you could factor out a 2 and the x plus 1's cancel. And now it's just a plain old constant 2. You don't need to worry about x anymore because all the x's cancel out. So the slope on the left side is 2. I'm going to use L for the, uh, for the left-hand slope. We, if For it to be differentiable, the right-hand slope needs to match. So we need this. We need the limit as x approaches negative 1 for the right-hand side. There is our f of x part. Now we need to subtract it by f of negative 1, uh, which is a little complicated because we saw when we plugged in negative 1, we get this. 5 minus a plus b. It's all being divided by f of x minus f of a. This is all need to, need, needs to be in parentheses there. We're going to distribute that minus sign to everything. So we're subtracting the whole thing. Oh, no, no, whoops. Uh, this, what did I do? Oh, this just needs to be negative 1 down here. Right. So up top, if you plug in negative, yeah, this part is when you plug in negative 1. So you get... 5 minus a plus b. Okay, so we got everything right there now. Um, man, I don't know what we're going to do about this. Maybe we'll have to try to use the other definition of a limit. Because right now, let's try the other definition of a limit at a point. The limit as h approaches zero for f. Remember, this is the other definition for the slope at an instant. So what I'm going to be doing is my a is negative one. That's the limit I'm trying to approach. I need to plug in negative uh, h minus one, or you could say negative one plus h. I got to plug that into the bottom function. So this is five uh, h minus one squared plus a times h minus one plus b, and then we're supposed to subtract that by f of a. So subtract. We already found out what f of a is. We already found out what f of negative 1 is. We already plugged that in. We got 5 minus a plus b. That's all being divided by h. All right, that's not anything easy to look at. Let me clean up the board, 
And then maybe we can see how we can simplify. Oh, I still need this stuff though. Wait, I lost an equation there. No, okay, I found out the left hand limit. Okay, so we're done with that. Okay, so man, this is this is really tough. Later on in calculus, we usually do something to make this easier. Um, but we have, we're not at that point in the course yet. So h minus 1 squared, that's h squared minus 2h plus 1. And then we can distribute that a. Add b, subtract 5 plus a minus b. It's all being divided by h. Oh, I don't like looking at it. This A and this A can cancel. This B and this B can cancel. So I like looking at it a little bit better. This is the limit. This H approaches 0. If I distribute the 5, that's 5H squared minus 10H plus 5 plus AH. Oh, so the plus 5 and the minus 5 are going to cancel. So we can cancel that out right now. Look, you can factor out an H. Even though this is looking pretty complicated, you can factor out an H from everything in the numerator. So factor out the H, and you're going to have H5, H minus 10 plus A over H. So those cancel. Now we don't have a divide by zero problem. If you plug in zero, you get negative 10 plus A. All right. Assuming I didn't mess anything up, now we're ready to finally answer this question. We're going to be able to solve for A here. The slope on the right is negative 10 plus that constant A. If the derivative, if it's differentiable at x equals negative 1, the slope on the left and the slope on the right need to be the same thing. Let me clear some space. Negative 10 plus A. So these two things need to equal each other. We got the left hand slope and the right hand slope. So negative 10 plus a needs to equal 2. And if you solve that equation, uh, you get a is 12. And that will help us solve this equation because we couldn't solve it because we had two unknowns. So we get 5 minus 12 plus b equals negative 5. So it's negative 7. Add 7 to both sides to get b is 2. I'm going to go test this answer. I'm probably going to cry if I messed up something and you know added or did some sort of arithmetic thing wrong. But that's the, that's the process for completing this problem. Uh, the graph of the function is given below. Where is it not differentiable? So one thing you want to check for is make sure it's continuous at x equals 4. Uh, because if you can't plug in 4 into your, uh, your formula for the uh, for the derivative at an instant, it's not going to work. Okay, um, so at x, actually, let's just read it left to right here. At x equals negative eight. Uh, one thing, you, another thing you want to look out for is what's happening with the slopes as you get infinitely close to these interesting points. So the slope coming from the left is going to be a positive slope. This is going up, but immediately to the right, the slope is negative, and there's no curve off like on this problem. So at x equals negative eight. It's not differentiable because the slopes don't agree. That's not the same as x equals negative 5, though, because the slopes gradually level off. So as we get infinitely close at negative 5, it looks like the slopes are going to level off and become something different. So we call these corners, okay? And we, can't, we don't have differentiability at corners where it sharply turns directions without any leveling off because the slopes don't match on the left and the right. At x equals 4, it's not even defined. So, I mean, it is defined, but... Um, if you were to plug in 4, your, I don't that's kind of a tricky one. At x equals 4, okay, uh, I'm actually right off the top of my head here. I should, I should look this one up, but uh, at x equals 4, because you plug in the value of 4 when you evaluate the instantaneous rate of change. That would give you something completely different uh, than the y values of the limit, right? Okay, so that makes sense. So the limit as x approaches 4 is going to be negative 1, but the value at x equals 4 is going to be 2. You're not getting two points that are infinitely close to one another that way. I think that's it uh, for differentiability. Where is it discontinuous? It's not discontinuous at x equals negative 8. The limit as you approach negative 8 is negative 1. 
The exact value is negative 1. It's continuous there. It's continuous here for the same reason. Remember, we were analyzing the slopes when we were thinking about differentiability. The slopes were opposite. The exact value of negative 2, um, that, those limits do exist. But how about at x equals 4, right? It's discontinuous because the limit and the exact value do not agree at x equals 4.